Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. We are continuing in our time machine. H.G. Wells will be proud of us. <laughs> As we are moving forward in time, we have left the Precambrian period of this week. We were in the Cambrian and the Ordovician period. Ooh. 540 to 440 oh. Ooh. million years ago. 100 million, 100 millions of years we have covered. This week was a little bit of build your library, just a tiny bit. Like I, I think there I were think one day, one day, the first week, and then it was a whole wonder of the uh, blossoming. Wonder group. two for blossoming. Absolutely. Group. So it's our second real, real yeah. module, right? We just came from the Big Bang and Precambrian, yep. and now we're really settling in. And this is where it starts to get interesting because there's critters. Yeah. So this is like those. It was very complex, difficult subjects. Now it's just easy. Now it's just weird critter critters, yeah. and specifically the Cambrian and the Ordovician period really starting to like blow your mind at what was out there and that that's kind of what was our focus this week yeah. was kind of these alien critters that were in cambrian maybe they were alien i don't know <laughs> who knows some people have got some theories in this house <laughs> <laughs> and then we talked a lot about um basically ordovician period where it started to really get into it like these underwater bugs and this is the important thing is everything right now is underwater and that's kind of a thing i got to keep reminding to my daughter is that this is all underwater now, at this time period, there's some stuff right on the edge of the water, and maybe there was some moss and stuff, but the vast majority of the life was underwater, and this, this is strictly underwater creatures, so I kind of, kind of have to keep reminding her of that, because she's yeah. thinking bugs, she's thinking the things that she's afraid of outside, <laughs> that her sister wants to smash with a hammer, all of that, type, and the wife wants me to get off the ceiling because it's spider season in the Pacific Northwest. All, the, all our Pacific Northwest listeners will go, yes, it's yes. It's spider season. It's, it's wolf spider season. They're coming indoors trying to hide. Um, basically, <laughs> we're getting into that. So we're going to go back just real quick to our favorite, my favorite book, The Four Billion Years. Life, the first four billion years. This is a good example of what you would cover in basically uh, one week like this. So we have Cambrian creatures and you can see how alien and crazy and weird and, and different they are. You do a couple reading and then the next page, you get into the Ordovician period and you can see how you just hopped 40 million years in one page flip. But you can see how you can go side by side where you have this kind of proto-scorpion creature here and this is literally a scorpion. Um, attacking some type of critter and they'll talk a little bit about those time periods so you're you're able to cover both time periods and then through all the additional books that you cover in that week you will continue to layer in more information more information about these time periods and i don't like when you cover these two ages like this where we had a cambrian and this ordovician period they're very related they, they there was this idea that we learned and we'll talk a little bit about one of the eon videos that they thought there was this cambrian die-off but maybe there isn't that there was like a mass extinction but maybe there wasn't and so these two time periods are kind of like smashed together. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach all Cambrian stuff and then do Ordovician. I just kind of said, okay, here's two time periods. They're kind of split between weird proto creatures and then like turbo bugs and underwater bugs. And we just kind of put them together and just said, across this time period, this thing happened. And so- Worked out pretty well. Working out really well on, on using these books to help showcase. And this is where the artwork in the books comes through and all these spines and all these books really help you understand what they are and what's really cool is in some of the dinosaur books that we covered last week they will show you the fossils of these creatures so we're yeah. seeing these beautiful artistic renderings some books are 3 3d renderings on computers others are beautiful you know watercolor like drawings whatever it is they're taking these fossils and the, these artists are imagining this. i love the synergy of like art and creativity with the science and it helps yeah. you visualize what, what you're going through. But let's get into a few of our books. So right. I just wanted to showcase the life book again because it does a really good job at kind of showing right. the nature of the creatures that we were well, going Well, and through. you can see what you would read in a week, right? So yeah. it's just those two spreads for this one spine one book. Spine. Now there are like four or five spines for each one and each week we want to highlight a new one. So yeah. this is the spine of the week we're going to highlight, Virginia Lee Burton Life Story. Life Story. This book is told to build your at, library spine. You can imagine you showed up into a theater and here comes this man in the top hat with a cane and he's about to tell you a story in kind of like a movie or a play or a theater. And so he's taking you through the various snippets of time, explaining what happened and on the screen on the left page, showing you kind of a visualization of what they're talking about. Very simple, small text. I think the first week we read a couple pages Second week, you read another couple of pages. Again, yeah. you're only nibbling on a lot of these books, one or two or three pages at a time. Some of the other books, you might get up to like five or six pages, but 
most of these books are just one or two pages and they're just wonderful really really cool drawings i think my daughter liked it because it's the play and her mom is, is uh doing the stage managing a play right now so we were able to kind of bring yeah, those two things together um and then he tells you know that's obviously going a little far but you can see that the artwork continues to progress as time continues to yeah. move on and it brings in you know whatever is happening in the world at the time so now you can see dinosaurs but again we're a lot of these books were only like two or three or four pages into them um, yeah, so far we really like this one though. Exactly. Um, I, I think that it's for the cost. I think this is like a sub $10 book or Something right around like there. So you know, some of these other spines are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so if you really want something that covers the whole range, I think this is a good affordable option. <laughs> and this has been out for a long time, so you can find used copies of this definitely. We can put a link in the show notes for this one. So your first impressions are positive po on this? Positive, yeah. I mean, I thought the, the mm -hmm. artwork was a little different. And it was a little, you know, something that we were getting like kind of abstracty watercolor images here. These are more like, in some of the other books, we'll talk to them more kind of photorealistic-y type of thing. Right. This is, this is of, older, definitely. Well, this definitely was first has, published in 1962. Yeah, and it definitely you can has tell. that feel to it. But I think, I think the nature mm -hmm. of presenting the information is kind of like a play. And you can almost imagine you being the, the pre presenter. And if you take it, you know, with a little bit of excitement and a little bit of enthusiasm... I think your learner would, would really get into it. Something like this where it's just like that one paragraph of text, great intro to the week, right? So if you yeah. can think about it as like, okay, voila, the Cambrian Ordovician period, and well, here we are with the life story. We start with that, and then we start diving into our other books. You can start to see how you, you structure the books in the way you present the information. So the thing that I would be very careful about with this one, though, is it was first published in 1962. This is an updated version that has the most recent information in it. So if you do get a used copy, make sure that you get the latest printing so that you have the right information. I think one of the things that we're trying to... I can't to, wait until they update it to the ancient aliens theory, too. <laughs> I, I think it's interesting with this period uh, because... This is a, a really dynamic thing. Yeah. It's funny, for something that obviously was so long ago and we have a lot of information about, they are making new discoveries yeah. every day. And so it really does matter how old your books are yeah. in this in this case, which I think is kind of funny. I don't well, think about like, oh, it doesn't matter how old that book is about ancient Rome. Our understanding is probably pretty similar. Yeah. You know, if that book was 10 years old, it's probably just the same. That's not the case with this necessarily. Yeah. They are making discoveries about yeah. dinosaurs well, and about prehistory all the time all the time and that you know what that's a great point that, and this is the history and the science is changing you know as, as we're doing it because and we'll jump a little bit here we did one of the eon videos and that's what i kind of alluded to they they don't there was always this idea that there was this cambrian ex mass extinction and because all these creatures died off or disappeared but they're now starting to find those creatures on different mm -hmm. places of the planet um in mm -hmm. fossilized records that they continue to survive or variations of them and they're starting to think, wow, maybe there was some like change in the environment over here, but it didn't change over here. And it wasn't necessarily a die off because the only place we're getting these fossils is from this one location. Maybe it wasn't. When they're starting to try to piece those together, the Eons video does a really good job at talking about how the way the information is presented is a very confident presentation. Yeah. And I think the science there is more of like we're getting snapshots and they're trying to piece it like they're making pieces. theories to put theories it together so that there's a through line and i think that you know from our standpoint that that's you know that's a challenge on their part to try to present this information mm -hmm. you're right things are changing all the time but they have a good idea of what's happening but it is but pretty some interesting of those micro details is is it's kind of fun to, to see how they're you know, how it evolves even just across yeah. a couple decades. I think it could be interesting to even put like a, you know, like a Google News alert for fossil <laughs> yeah. or something because stuff is coming up all the time. All the time. And it's neat for our kids to be able to see that while this is obviously so long ago, this is current too and that our understanding is constantly changing with it as new Absolutely. discoveries are made and, you know, new science is performed. It's, I think it's really neat. Anyway, right. there's a re current relevance. There's that, a, there's a, even like I'm listening to Tides of History and he's going through this separate podcast um, that I really enjoy. It's all about history and he's doing kind of an early man. So if you're, if you're thinking about doing this you, and you have an older learner, that, that podcast may be a nice thing. It's about 30 or 40 episodes of prehistory. Um, and he even in there, and he's having to make like edits in his podcast about stuff that's twenty or thirty thousand years ago that they're now discovering changes. Yeah, and he's like this. I had to update my podcast this week because there was a new paper that came out that said something was different. So this this whole shifting of understanding is is always happening. It's almost like blocks that are constantly moving and. And we got a decent pattern, but the, you know, the facts are kind of moving around here and there. I think it's really, it's really cool, cool. To, to tell our, our kids, though, that like, history isn't static necessarily. Yeah. Our, our 
our, history. Uh, obviously history our is history. is what happened, but our understanding of history is not static. Absolutely. And that we're constantly right. learning things, even when the books, you know, tell us confidently. Like, I think it's cool because it makes them question like, oh, interesting. I wonder, and they can have their own theories too. I don't know. Yep. I think it's interesting. It's wonderful. Now we're going to showcase one of our spines that we picked up, yes. which is the Life Through Time. Right. And so if, if you remember, this is the same brand that, well, this is also a DK, which you know, it's good. But um, they did Street, DK, are you listening? Street Through Time, City Through Time, um, and A Child Through Time. This is the same, um, but it's, it's all... Uh, life in prehistory yeah. through so, time. Just wonderful. So, for example, like Beautiful this is renderings. Cambrian time. So you, you get this huge spread, and you get the critters. Wonderful art. Nice little write up. Simple little page. Again, you can cover this in five minutes, le less than that. But it's a great accompaniment if you're doing life story. If you're doing one of the other spines, you can get this wonderful art renderings. Especially yeah. if you're doing some art this week. It's beautiful. And then you kind of have this cam. You have that was pre-Cambrian, so now you got kind of this Cambrian explosion. Um, and then it's very much if you're, it's reminiscent of a look and find. So if you have mm -hmm. a young one with you, like I do, the three-year-old, you have them come down here and find that little critter and f have them find it in the in the book while you're reading to your older student. Great way to kind of a, bring in a younger student. And it has my favorite guy. Okay, we're gonna jump forward. This is the coolest guy ever. Right, right there, that guy. Hallucigenia, great name. Great right. name because it is. It looks like a hallucination. He's a one-inch worm, twelve legs. 14 spines yeah and they it's find pretty cool they find them Look all over up. the place so this, neat. Is, this was my this is our favorite critter of the week uh, i think that we're going to start talking about the critter of the week so each um, each book uh, yeah. each uh spread is is like another a different time period a different so, time period so this so, is the sularian this is the age of fish and then i think the next one is um yes yeah, so they're coming so each on each week land. you'll cover a, you know two pages of this it's not like a lot but yeah. the pictures are so amazing that our daughter just can't stop looking at this one this is one I, I might recommend if you have it from the library that you just get it from the library because you're only, like I said, going to be doing a couple of pages a week. Yeah. Um, but if you can find it on sale or something, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and you can just see how it moves through time. And it's and just fantastic. Uh, we have enjoyed this one a lot. We really like this one. And it's not like a big additional book load. We realized after we finished our Around the World journey, you know, that we had quite a heavy book load on our daughter. Yeah. Partially it was because we just, we wanted to explore and cover all these. And partially it was for you all so that we could read through and find the best books. But it ended up putting, you know, a, a, more of a workload on her too. And so this year we're trying to, with this study, we're trying to pare down our books to really the best ones. Um, and so, you know, but that's why we don't have quite as many books to show. Because yeah. we're trying to do our best to not overload her. Exactly. Yeah, the overloading <clears throat> is a key point. Also, one of the things that... um. <clears throat> Uh, it's really important when you're starting to go through these periods that I found that I have to constantly remind her of where we've come from. In a book like this where you can just go Cam pre-Cambrian, Cambrian, Yeah, remember Ordovician. we were here, and then now there's this, and remember, and now we're here. It's yes. like, oh, okay, it's like a quick recap. Yep. And so just, this can be really helpful for that too. Just, just to keep your mind focused on where we are, what, what, what changes. And you can do little reminders and be like, remember, this is when life first came in, and then there was this huge massive explosion, Cambrian explosion of you know, a wealth of different creatures, all different types of varieties. And then you have this Ordovician period where there's kind of this rise of these kind of like super bugs and then underwater super bugs. Oh, oh my gosh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ah, I had to sneeze. Um, and we don't edit. We don't edit. Because we don't have time for we that. We don't have people. time for that. We're homeschool parents. We ain't got time for that. Yeah, you see all those other people on YouTube, they're all doing the edits. We do do it. There's no going to be no jump cuts here. No. We promise. So using a book like this is just a great way to kind of do a quick recap, especially if you're at the beginning of the week and you, you know, your learner's like, where were we last week? And you can bring them up to speed. Uh, right. I found that has been very helpful. I'm now like the third or fourth. We're on the third uh, week right now. And it, it has been a very helpful technique. So Agreed. give it to you. Agreed. Um, continuing on with our evolution talk. From, this is a from books wolf we've added. To woof. Um, yeah, so every week we're doing a little bit of that amazing evolution book that we showed you last week. And I'm trying to, you know, as I can find the books that will help pair with it, yep. this is a really great one. And this one. is by uh, Hudson Talbot, The Story of Dogs. It's absolutely fantastic. Talking, we love dogs. We have a dog. We, yeah, we're dog people. So it's, it's absolutely man's best friend. Um, and the evolution of this massive, you know, hierarchical dominance creature synergy where you have this really really smart human being and really really powerful weapon and a dog fusing together to become kind of this like team of apex predators and it tells that story of how wolves were kind of these you know out on their own 
fearful of man, man living in fear of wolves, and then how those possibly how those critters came across those those dog you know the wolves came across how they're domesticated how they're slowly trained um mm-hmm. it's and it's, it's told it's told through the story of a lone wolf who's been outcast from his his um you know tribe type of um group basically their collection of dogs of wolves and then how this young boy has been kind of an outcast as well and they kind of work together and then how the evolution of that relationship goes through time it is so this is kind of a I mean, this would be totally appropriate to read when absolutely. you when you get into early man and we might actually just check it out, check again, it out again at that time because it is such a good book yeah. but so did the did the dogs actually evolve out of wolves or is it the the different crossbreeding of different wolf yeah. varieties they made actually, the dogs they, or was there actually there was an evolution of there's there's an evolution and, and force selection so one of the things that um, they talk about in the evolution is one of the various ways evolution occurs and there's many different ways whether it's environmental pressure some type of mutation um, they also talk about force selection as well and this book is a great example of the force selection and how specifically how you can get from one wolf to you know a lab or a chihuahua right, <laughs> right. and how how that force selection occurs how we go from one species to f- basically 40 uh, 400 different subspecies um, all within the same family. That this book is great for that. So if you're if you're looking to try to answer the idea of forced evolution or forced uh, selection, you know, through domestication of animals, whether it's cows, pigs, chickens, um, or dogs, um, and you're trying to cover that 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 topic, this is another good one. So when you're doing the Amazing Evolution book, you're talking about all the various ways you know creatures evolve. This is one of those, and that I think is really. Um, it connects because it's something that we understand. And then you can immediately go into the force selection um, by humans with animals, but also talking about breeding uh, plants. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like how does a simple brassica go from being a kale to a Brussels sprout, right? And how, how, did, how did the selection, selection mechanism occur over that time period? Same idea. So when you're talking about right now, we're talking about mainly animals, but in about a week or two, uh, we're going to be talking about plants and how plants evolve as well. And so you're going to get this like bifurcation where you're going to talk about a lot of plants and a lot of animals because the, the two the two go together. And this is a good book to kind of like talk about that very nuanced topic. So, Yeah, I think it's really great. And then because we're talking about bugs, we have this book we recommend is Paleo Bugs. Survival of the Creepiest. Creepiest. Um, this, this is, is a, a book we added that we just... I, I loved it because... If you're looking to do artwork, if you're looking to do, in, you know, looking at the cool bugs, the cool critters, what I really like about it is they put the um, put the scale next to it. So you got, but it's not a, it's not like a, a, you know, a lot of times with the dinosaur books, they have like a, you know, six foot tall man and compared to a Tyrannosaurus Rex and blah blah blah. They have a little four foot kid sitting next to this giant bug, and that can definitely wig them out. So if you imagine like this giant protoscorpion here sitting next to your kid. Um, pretty cool, and so they always give you kind of the scale of the bugs that they're talking this about. This has been a fun book, and you know, this is another one where you're only covering just yeah, a handful of pages a Three, week. Four foot millipede. How do you like that? Yeah. So, so you know, you're not covering a ton every week, but the the drawings are really engaging. Yeah. Um. So we really enjoyed this book. We have another bug book. We'll show you next week. Next week. But one of the things that I think this is really helpful with is what we did this week for our main craft. Yep. Uh, you know, our kids just really got into these cool alien looking bugs um, and so there was a lot of drawing that happened this week that they drew of course in the student notebook mm-hmm. for blossom and root but also we did a lot of play-doh mm-hmm. just you know making lots of weird critters and you know nothing yeah. is too strange they're, they're over there making their trilobites and their bugs and i'm over there making my little hallucinogenia <laughs> yeah they had a really good that's time what, with play-doh what I do with my time people yeah so that that was the the main way we kind of enforced this and then yeah. of course the great list of eons videos from yeah. blossom and root which is really terrific i don't know another way to really get those videos like you'd have to go through them and then sort them all out by timeline it's worth the price of the curriculum just to have her sort yeah. all those videos for you because yeah. they're terrific and i don't know how else you would like yeah find them easily S- super useful great thing to do uh you know after dinner we would toss one on you know when she goes off to the to the play i'm able to get one or two of them done do it in the afternoon they're great videos super fun super engaging um talking head but also a lot of cut sequences to wonderful um depictions of those creatures um, great animations of the planet, you know, and underwater yeah. environments and things of that nature. Wonderful thing. Cannot, I cannot 
recommend it high enough, those Eon videos. They yeah. really help understand and close the gap on the learning. Our daughter had a good time with the first week, but it was a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. It was you know trying to understand these big time scales yep. and creation of the universe, the whole thing, like the Big Bang, all of it. It was, it was a lot. This week, we got down to like, okay, critters, yeah. something our kids can yeah. understand. And our little one, our three-year-old, really enjoyed it too. She, she can come right along now because um, it's, you know, while we do hit a couple more challenging concepts like evolution and things of that nature, but um, just understanding bugs and different critters yeah. and watching a few videos, not a problem. So I would say if you're just starting this and you've done your first week and you're like, ooh, it was a little heady for my kids. Yeah. Give it some time until you get into creepy critters because I think this is where we're really starting to settle in. I can see now that we're in our second module, we're settling into the yeah. groove and we're starting to really explore the cool animals. And my daughter, it's funny, when I get home from work, sometimes she'll sit down and she'll go, Mom, do you know that there was this bug and this is what it did? And our kids are really geeking out over these cool bugs yeah. and cool critters. And, and I think that's yeah. really fun. Now that we're in the third module, it, it's exactly the same. It's really just look at all these cool creatures. Here's the great advancement of this time period. So basically every one of these time periods has some new advancement, whether it's you know the, pre -cam the Cambrian explosion of the variety of bugs to the Ordovician where they started to develop exoskeletons and a little bit more of a plate armor. And you can start to talk about, well, there was a lot of prey predator relationships and you know, how were the ammonites, ammonites you know, evolving so they can run away from the giant you know, scorpion-like creature? You know, things like that, really cool. So that each era basically has its own, you know, own changes and own evolutions and, and what did the critters you know, change to? And obviously when we get into the next module, we're gonna talk about fish. You know, fish are starting to appear and then fish starts to create sharks yeah. and they start to create all these other things. And, and eventually, um, you know, we go from exoskeletons to vertebrates. And, and so all of a sudden you're starting to see that evolution that played out in the, in a couple weeks ago, we talked about the grandmother fish book. We're starting to see that evolution play out and how close, how, 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 how we are getting each and every piece of who we are yeah. um, along the way. So it's really, really cool. It's been very cool. And again, keeping that meta viewpoint over what you're doing and why each period matters because we're picking out those pieces is like, oh, these are vertebrates, we're vertebrates. Oh, these are, you know, these, these creatures all of a sudden now have four legs. We have four, you know, two arms, two legs, we have five fingers. You know, it's like all this stuff starts to piece in. You can start drawing those lines and you're just drawing that through line straight to your child so as they're coming through. I wonder, you know, as you're talking about this, if this is gonna be something that we would do in the first level when we start doing ancient civilizations, and we're covering different cultures and say like, mm -hmm. this is where we started to have laws. And this mm -hmm. is where this came from. Yeah. And and again, drawing those parallels, parallels. to now. Yeah, that'd be a good I, thing to do. I think that might be an interesting, I hadn't thought about that before, but yeah. I think that might be interesting. And, and you know, when I get into this, I'm just trying to, trying to connect it in some way. And so you do find these patterns and these patterns will help you tell that story. And mm -hmm. so whatever works with your learner, however they gravitate to it. Right now, my, my learner really likes the creatures, really likes the animals, likes the bugs all of that stuff. So I'm trying to pull that towards right. having her identify pieces of herself in that because, you know, she is this, she is an example of this unbroken chain that started in the Precambrian period to her existence now. And she mm -hmm. needs to understand that she is part of that chain. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's a cool thing to understand that, cool. you know, you watching this right now on your, you know, transistor radio phone computer thing, transistor. you know, <laughs> are, is an unbroken chain of life going back about 4 billion years. And that's, that's a humbling thing to know that you're part of that. And so I'm trying to bring that that understanding with her. So Very cool. So we anyway. had a great week. Uh, next week, fish. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs>